What's up guys, my name's Brandon and Apple just released iOS 13.5.1 just a couple of weeks after the release of iOS 13.5. And in this video, we're gonna be discussing what's new in this update, if it patches the recent uncovered jailbreak, the performance, battery life, bugs, and more. And Apple also released watchOS 6.2.6 .6 for you Apple Watch users, and we will discuss what's new in this as well near the end of this video. But anyways, taking a look at the size of this update, you can see here 13.5.1 came in at just under 80 megabytes on all devices that I installed it on, 77.7 .7 here on my iPhone 11 Pro. And you can see the only thing we got as far as what this update's about is Apple just says that it provides provides important security updates and is recommended for all users. So we'll talk about that here in a moment, but taking a look at the build number, if we go into our settings, general about, tap on 13.5.1, you can see the build number there is 17F80. And if we scroll down a little bit further, you will see the modem firmware right there. It's 1.06.00, which is unchanged from iOS 13.5. So if you were hoping to see any kind of improvements in cell connectivity or anything that relies on the modem, you will not see that in this new update. So now let's talk about what's actually new here in iOS 13.5.1. And really the only reason that Apple pushed this update out is to patch the iOS 13.5 uncovered jailbreak. And this was confirmed first by Pwn to Own on Twitter. He said, iOS 13.5.1 and tvOS 13.4.6 were just released to patch the kernel vulnerability used by the uncovered jailbreak. And now Apple updated their security page to show exactly what was fixed in iOS 13.5.1 and iPadOS 13.5.1. And you can see here, there's only one thing, and that is the kernel bug, once again, that was used by the Uncover team for the Uncover jailbreak. And you can even see that they credited Uncover for that CVE there at the bottom. So no names, it just says Uncover. So that is literally the only thing. That is the only reason that Apple released iOS 13.5.1. And honestly, that really should not be a shock to anybody at this point. So with this being such a small update and that being the only thing listed on the security page, that's really all you can expect from iOS 13.5.1. I would not expect any kind of additional bug fixes as far as the performance, the battery life. There's no new features, nothing changed inside of settings, nothing new with the COVID contact tracing. I checked that. Really nothing else has changed at all except for that security fix on the back end to prevent jailbreaking on 13.5.1. And once again, if you're still unsure or confused about the COVID-19 exposure logging, this page right here in settings, go back and watch my iOS 13.5. I made two videos talking about this specifically and going into detail about what it does. So if you missed that, make sure to go back and watch that. But once again, there's really nothing else changed here. Now there were some bugs in iOS 13.5 that I've been experiencing over the past couple of weeks that I wanted to talk about. And you know, I was hoping that iOS 13.5.1 would address these, but I doubt we're really gonna see any type of bug fixes in this update because once again, it was only pushed out for security reasons to patch that uncovered jailbreak. But one of the big ones actually has to do with Instagram. So for some reason, my Instagram would just crash a lot on iOS 13.5. This happened on multiple devices. So I don't think it's an issue with the Instagram app itself. It seems to be iOS 13.5. So this would only happen once every few days but also somebody on Twitter said that they're having the story bug, which I reported on a while back here on the channel, and I did not even know that was still around. You can see here, Isaac described this bug over on Twitter. He says, so when I play a video on Instagram stories, and then I get out of it or go to the next one, the music keeps playing. So basically when you would like watch a story and you would go to your home screen or go into another application, you will continue hearing that audio. And this persisted through like two different versions of iOS previously, I believe it was like iOS 13.3. It's been a while since I've seen that, but apparently some people are seeing that again in 13.5. So hopefully we see a fix for that very soon. Also, we continue to see reports about mail bugs. I personally have only had the delayed mail notification. So basically it'll say I have new mail, but I go into mail and that email is not there. I have to refresh and then it eventually shows up. Sometimes I have to go out of mail and then go back into it to see that new email. And other people are reporting various other bugs inside of the mail application. But once again, I'm gonna stop talking about this because there's gonna be mail bugs for the remainder of iOS 13. We're not gonna see fixes for mail until iOS 14. So I'm really not gonna talk about those too much more. I know you guys keep wanting me to mention them, but I mention them in every video. So I'm gonna stop talking about mail just know that it's going to be fixed in iOS 14. iOS 13 is never going to fix all of the mail bugs. So we're just going to have to deal with it for the time being. But aside from those minor things, iOS 13.5 has been really good for me. I mean, the battery life, the performance, everything has been solid. I would expect the exact same for iOS 13.5.1. And speaking of performance, I did run a Geekbench test here. And if you take a look at my history here, you can see up at the top is iOS 13.5.1. Right below that is iOS 13.5. So 
1333 versus 1338. So a minor decrease in the single core, but the multi-core, we have a slight increase. So 3478 versus 3472. Now you're probably not gonna be able to notice the difference just using, you know, 13.5.1 versus 13.5. If you just had them side by side, you probably would not tell a big difference in terms of performance, but we do see a minor bump there in the multi-core on the Geekbench scores. But as far as battery life goes, battery life should be exactly the same. Now, a lot of people reported that iOS 13.5 really help their battery life a lot. They noticed, you know, increased battery life, the battery lasting longer, not draining as much. So once again, I would expect the same here on 13.5.1. I would not expect it to get any better though. And speaking of iOS 13.5, I just wanted to give you guys an update on this poll I ran five days ago. So you can see here, 14,000 votes on this poll, and you can see 46% of people said that iOS 13.5 has been excellent with no bugs. 16% said good, just minor bugs. 8% said decent, some annoying bugs slash battery life issues. 27% said they're not on 13.5 and only 3% said bad, which is really, really low. So a lot of people are very, very satisfied with iOS 13.5. We did also get 476 comments and a lot of these mention, you know, good battery life. So you can see here the top comment with 62 thumbs up. Alec says, it seems like the battery life has improved significantly. So I would say it's a pretty good update there. So I've seen that a lot as well. A lot of people said battery life has improved, like I mentioned. And there's a lot of comments I can run through, but I don't wanna bore you guys. Just go ahead to the community tab on my channel if you wanna read through these, but there are some pretty interesting things in here to note as well. But once again, I talked about most of those in my iOS 13.5 follow-up, but I will be making a follow-up video on 13.5.1. So I may mention a lot more of your comments from a new community poll when I post that later on this week. And I'll bring you guys that update video on 13.5.1 next week. Now, before we move on to watchOS 6.2.6, I want to answer the question, should you update to iOS 13.5.1? And I say, it depends. If you want to jailbreak or, you know, you care about jailbreaking at all, and you think you may want to do it in the future, then no, absolutely do not update to iOS 13.5.1. It patches the jailbreak and you will not be able to jailbreak in the future on 13.5.1. It's a very low likelihood. So stay on iOS 13.5. If you care about jailbreaking or you think you're going to care about jailbreaking at all, in the future. And even if you don't care about jailbreaking, if iOS 13.5 is running perfectly fine for you, I would just stay there. I mean, the really the only thing that iOS 13.5.1 fixes is that jailbreak vulnerability, which is nothing that's really gonna, you know, hurt your device. It's not like a hacker can go out and, you know, get remote access to your device. It's not really something like that where you need to update. So I say there's really no point in updating to 13.5.1 unless you're just one of those people who always likes to be on the latest software version. So if that's you, then yeah, go ahead. There's really no harm in updating the, to 13.5.1. It's not gonna you know decrease battery life or performance or anything like that. It's just going to patch that security vulnerability that leads to the jailbreak. So yeah, that's my take when it comes to updating to 13.5.1 or not. So anyways, moving on to watch OS 6.2.6, which was also just released today. It was also a very, very small update. And you can see here, Apple only said, this update provides important security updates and is recommended for all users. So pretty much the exact same verbiage there as iOS 13.5.1. So aside from the security fixes in watchOS 6.2.6, you're not gonna notice any kind of performance or battery life improvements or anything like that. Just like iOS, this was strictly just a security patch. But in iOS 6.2.5, you guys did see some new watch faces, so some Pride watch faces. So of course we have the Pride Digital and the Pride Analog right here, but we also have the California. You can actually change this so it's you know rainbow like that for Pride, which is actually pretty cool. It looks pretty good right there. And you could do the same for the gradient right here. So if we go to gradient and then we have Pride right here. So you can see the gradient Pride. And then also it's the same with the numerals duo right here. We have the Pride version of that. And then also the numerals mono, we have that in as well. So right here at the very beginning, we have the Pride version of that. So that was in addition to new watch bands that Apple released for Pride. So these will kind of just match with those new watch bands, which actually looks pretty cool if you wanted to rock these watch faces and watch bands. And of course we did see additional features in watchOS 6.2.5, like the ECG and other health features being brought to Saudi Arabia. But once again, this is just like iOS 13.5, watchOS 6.2.5 and 6.2.6 .6 are pretty much just like iOS. You're not really gonna expect any kind of major new features or changes until the next major version, which of course is going to be watchOS 7. So if you have an Apple Watch and you're wanting to see new features and you know major bug fixes and things like that, I would not expect that at all until watchOS 7, which will be out once again later this year when iOS 14 gets released, 
for the iPhones and the iPads. So just a very minor update for you Apple Watch users today. And once again, if you wanna update, it's fine. It's not a major update. It's not anything that you need to download because once again, it's just a minor security patch likely related to the uncovered jailbreak. So that's pretty much it for iOS 13.5.1 and watchOS 6.2.6. Very, very minor updates. Once again, mainly just to patch the uncovered jailbreak, the vulnerability that was used to lead to that jailbreak. So if you care about jailbreaking, do not update. If you just wanna be on the latest version at all times, go ahead and update, the choice is up to you. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about this update and the jailbreak. I do also have a jailbreak tweaks video coming out very soon. I did make one a few months back on iOS 13.3, so it's not like I haven't made a jailbreak tweaks video in a long time, I have. I'm just gonna make a new updated one for iOS 13.5 sometime this week. So be sure to be on the lookout for that if you are jailbroken. And I'm actually curious, how many of you guys actually jailbroke on iOS 13.5 using Uncover? Let me know down in the comment below. You guys know I'm not you know, as into the jailbreak scene anymore. And that's you know the big reason I didn't post a tutorial here on my channel, but I'm still curious as to how many of you guys are actually jailbroken now. Let me know how that's working out for you. If you're liking it, some of your favorite tweaks, whatever you wanna share, let me know down in the comments below. You guys know I love having conversations with you down there. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Very minor update today. Hope you did enjoy it though. I do bring you guys updates no matter how big or small the update is. So hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe for more videos just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.